Volition's 2004 Punisher is undoubtedly a classic. It provided the perfect balance of comic book lore and experiences from the tie-in film. But what truly set the game apart from other titles was its distinct interrogation system, creative kills, and the glorious slaughter mode. For all intents and purposes, the Punisher should have received a sequel and, well, it almost did. Back in March during Volition's dev stream, we got to see early gameplay of Punisher 2 for the first time. At a brief glance, you can see that it plays almost identically to Saints Row 1 and to some degree Saints Row 2. But before we fully dive into the gameplay, let's spend a moment to look at Punisher 2's origins and its brief development. So back in 2004, just after the first Punisher was released, a small Volition team began work on a sequel while another team was in the early stages of developing Bling Bling. And of course, as you all know, Bling Bling would eventually evolve into the Saints Row we know today. As development for Punisher 2 picked up steam, it was decided very early on to move away from a linear structure and have the game become open world. However, in order to accommodate the new gameplay design, an open world engine would have to be made. An alternate solution was found for this, as senior designer Brad Johnson describes in Volition's Punisher stream, they are better off using the engine already programmed for Saints Row rather than starting from scratch. And we had the Saints Row engine to play with, and we thought, why, you know, why work on two separate engines, you know, might as well start thinking about combining them. This is where information on the game's development becomes a bit blurry, but we do know Punisher 2 continued production for at least two more months. During that time, it gained the official title Punisher 2 Sandbox Punishment, and some assets were able to run an early phase of Saints Row. This is sadly as far as the game would progress because it was then abruptly cancelled. It hasn't been stated why the game was halted, but it's rumored THQ lost the rights to the Punisher trademark, or they simply didn't greenlight the project once it was pitched. Time to call it a night. But that won't stop us from analyzing the gameplay and seeing what the game could have been. So right away it appears Punisher 2 is running in Phase 5 or a slightly later build of Saints Row. For context, in the early days of Bling Bling, I, I mean Saints Row's development, each build of the game was assigned a phase after each month of production. So this is how the game appeared after 5 months of development. Just to see how drastically the game evolved after each phase, here's Phase 3. So we can assume Punisher 2 is running in Phase 5 or 6 from certain landmarks that were removed from later renditions. We also see a lot of NPC models that never made it into the final release of Saints Row 1. The most obvious of which are the Saints members in their original green game colors. Some of the vehicles shown did make it into the full game, except for of course Frank's GDO. The only weapon we get a clear shot of is the Tombstone, but it appears to be in its final form. In other shots of Phase 5, it shows the original shotgun was a sawed off with a hand grip. We also see a few unique takedown animations. Some of these even made their way into early builds of Saints Row 2, as seen from this vision piece from Greg Donovan's Virgil Slice GDC presentation. And while we're on the topic of the vision piece, it appears the Punisher's iconic interrogation system was at one point considered to be in the game. Just imagine some of the creative ways we could have beat up Donnie or Matt for information. But back to the Punisher 2 gameplay, principal artist Frank Marquardt explains some of his memories on the project and the ideas the team wanted to implement. Yeah, I remember we were doing like these little blocks and things. Yeah. And man, I remember we were, we were trying to design this thing of like doing like a highway battle Yeah. as well. And I think we were also messing a lot with like trying to get Daredevil into it. That okay. was like some of the early ideas of what we really wanted to do with uh, Punisher. Yeah. Hmm, some pretty interesting stuff. I wouldn't be surprised if the highway battle he described was reworked in the Saints Row 1 as Price's boss battle. And if it wasn't clear, the final game would have taken place in New York. I'd be very curious to see Volition's take on the city, but sadly, we'll never see it. So there you have the cancelled sequel to The Punisher. It's quite disheartening the game was never finished, but at least elements of it lived on through Volition's other work. Even a decade later, you could still see hints of The Punisher through certain animations and gameplay. If THQ Nordic were to get the license back for The Punisher, I'd be happy to see Volition throw their hands in the ring again to remake such a deserved sequel for the character. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you'd like to see the history of other cancelled Volition projects, please let me know in the comments. And like always, thank you for watching, and I'll catch you guys next time.